Let's suppose that we are using laptop and we are connected to the home router. Router have established connection with the internet. When we search for the google.com website, we basically requested router for the IP address of the domain google.com. Router has received our request and by recursion will try to find IP address of the Google domain. When one of the global DNS servers resolve our request, valid IP address will be sent back all the way along to the, our laptop and Google website will be shown. That was quick demonstration how DNS basically works. Let's check this scenario now. We have a laptop and instead of router we are connected to the ESP32 wireless network. To serve a website ESP has running HTTP server on the port 80. Same as before, when we search for google.com website, laptop will try to resolve google.com domain by sending DNS request to the ESP32. In this case, instead of resolving DNS query by forwarding it to the global DNS servers, we will intercept DNS query and forward it to the internal DNS server running on the UDP port 53. ESP32 will then, as a result, send IP address 10.10.10.10 back to the client. Just to mention, this IP address is the IP address of the ESP in the same time. When laptop received resolved IP address, website served on the ESP32 will be shown in the browser. Domain google.com will stay in the client's web browser as a domain, but content will be served from the internal ESP32 HTTP server. This process is called DNS hijacking. As you can guess, in this process, any domain requested from the client will be resolved to the same IP address, IP of the ESP32. Let's see now how we can implement this. Ok, I have here already written code for set ESP into access point mode and spin up the HTTP server. HTTP server has one home route and handler for that route will just send word hello as a response. I have flashed this code and my ESP is already powered up. So I will connect my laptop to the ESP32 wireless network. After connecting, I will open comment prompt and check my IP address. As you can see, I have got IP address 10.10.10.12 and gateway is 10.10.10.10. .10. That is address of the ESP. When I open browser and navigate to the ESP IP address, we got a valid response. But when I navigate to some domain, for example google.com, we have got the no internet error and that is perfectly fine for now. I will now connect back to my home network. Ok, let's see now how we can implement DNS hijacking. First I will open Visual Studio Code integrated terminal and inside of my project I will create folder components. Then I will cd into it. Because I already have prepared C library for creating DNS hijacking server, packaged as ESPIDF component, I will just clone it from the my github repository. After component cloning, we can go back to the main file and include DNS hijacking server header file. In event handler, immediately after starting web server, I will call new function with the name start DNS server. In the body of this function, I will parse ESP IP address string to the valid IPv4 address type. And then all what we need to do is to call function DNS hijack serve start and provide a resolved IP address. Ok, I will now build and flash this code into ESP32. After flashing process we can connect again to the ESP32 wireless network. When we go to the ESP address we have got hello message. But now, when we have running DNS hijacking server on the ESP, we can go to any domain and we will get the same response from the HTTP server running on the ESP32. Pretty cool, huh? This implementation can be very handy to open captive portal on the ESP32. You can search more on Google about what actually is captive portal. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.